So what's the difference between the topic particle and the subject particle? What work was, book is this, please? This is the book here. It's called Level 1 Workbook, and it's in our TikTok shop. Okay. So for reference as well, just so you know. Oh. Um, so this book also uh, uses information from this textbook. So this is the textbook, and this is where a lot of the information comes from. Um, so I recommend you use both. You use the textbook and the workbooks, or if you want, um, you can just get one or either, but I do recommend getting both. And because uh, sometimes you will be asked questions where the information is in this book, but you're being asked about them in this book. So just so you know, there is a textbook involved as well. Um, and this is kind of what we're talking about here. This is what the subject that we're in, the subject particle. And we do have a section here where we sort of talk about the differences between innen and ika. Essentially, essentially the differences that we talk about, there are a couple differences. There's not just one, there's a couple ways that they're different. But a good one to know is that the subject particle emphasizes the thing to the left, emphasizes the subject. In this case, the subject is being emphasized, Tom is being emphasized. Whereas the topic particle um, emphasizes what comes to the right, it emphasizes what comes after the topic. In this case, it's the verb, mogoyo. So Tommy mogoyo emphasizes Tom, and Tomun mogoyo emphasizes mogoyo. Um, is this book suitable for beginners? Yes. This book is suitable for beginners, and so is this one. Okay, so essentially, oh, sorry about that. Let's refocus here. Here we go. Okay, so in this multiple choice questions, it's asking us, A, the topic particle places emphasis on what comes to the left or the right. The topic particle emphasizes what comes to the right. All right. Whereas the subject particle places emphasis on what comes to the left. So that is one of the differences between the subject and topic particles. It's not the only difference, but it is one of the differences. Okay. So in the sentence, Mary ga kombuheo, that means Mary studies what is being emphasized. What is being emphasized in this sentence? So we're using the subject particle, right? We have the subject particle, Mary ga. So what is being emphasized? Remember that the subject particle emphasizes what comes to the left, emphasizes the thing behind it. So the answer is one, the subject. Emphasizes Mary. Mary is the one studying. Mary is the person who is studying. That person is Mary. She is the one studying. But this sentence, Mary nin kombueo, what is being emphasized? So here we have a different particle. We've got the topic particle. So this sentence still means Mary studies, right? The meaning is the same, but what's being emphasized is kombueo, the verb. Yes, kasha, beautiful. The verb is what's being emphasized. So this sentence is kind of like saying, Mary is studying. The thing that Mary is doing, she is studying. That is what she's doing. She's not doing other things. She's not eating, she's not drinking, she's studying. Whereas this sentence emphasizes Mary. She, Mary is the one studying. Not that person, not the other person. Mary, her, that girl. Mary is the one who is studying. Okay. So that is one difference between the subject and topic particles. Again, it's not the only difference, but it's a good one to be aware of. 
And we have a note here, basically saying that, you know, the difference between Unnan and Ika is complex, it's nuanced, it depends heavily on context, and it's something that a lot of people struggle with, even at a higher level. So we have three basic rules for you, three basic rules to follow to help you know which one to use. So the first rule, use the topic particle. I don't know if you can read this very well. It's a bit small. <clears throat> so by using nun, we're saying speaking about Mary, she is studying. Uh, yes, you're talking about Mary is the topic. So Mary is the to topic of my sentence. And you're emphasizing what she's doing. You're emphasizing the action that she is doing, which in this case is studying. Can you show us which books you're working on right now? That is an excellent question. Um, I won't show them to you, but we are currently working on the level three and also level four workbooks. And we're working on the second piece of Korean podcast book as well. Okay. So... So, okay, back to this. So you use the topic particle when you're making general statements. So when you're making a general statement like, I am American, or Sarah likes reading books, sort of statements of facts or statements of things, you use the topic particle. Rule number two, use the, actually I should put this in like yellow, because I used yellow before. Okay. The subject particle is used when you're describing nouns. So if you want to say, like, the apple is big, or the movie is boring, or, you know, my friend is funny, anything like that, if you're describing a noun, use the subject particle. And rule number three, if you are talking about comparisons and contrast, if you're comparing things like you know, I like apples, but I don't like pears, or, you know, I like reading, but I don't like, I don't know, watching movies or something. If you're talking about comparisons, you use the topic particle. <clears throat> okay, so that's some general rules. Again, it's complicated, it's nuanced. These particles are not simple things. If you ask someone what's the difference between Inan and Ika, there's not a simple answer because there's lots of ways they're different, they're used for different circumstances, it depends a lot on contrast, and we don't really have an equivalent in English, but it's a good place to start. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit actually, so I might end it here. Um, I need to get more in practice of like speaking for a long period of time to do like a longer live stream. But the next one is the object particle. So I'll do that next time I do a live stream, which I'm planning on doing one um, maybe this weekend or on Friday a week from now. But today, just as a recap, we covered the topic part of particle versus the subject particle. And we practiced using the subject particle to make some simple sentences. Simple sentences about describing actions that people do and a little bit about describing nouns. Those are the two things that the subject particle does. It is used to sort of define who is doing the action or what is being described. <clears throat> and that is what it does. We also practice some vocabulary from this book um, using the subject particle and practicing whether we attach e or ka. Remember that e is used for nouns ending on a consonant and ka is used for nouns ending on a vowel. Do we have a book in French? We do not, unfortunately, just English. Only English, unfortunately. Um, and again, here is the book right here. The level one workbook is what I was using in this live stream. And just so you know, there is a textbook as well. This textbook is recommended if you want to um, use this workbook because they are designed to kind of go together. Um, and this textbook is actually also available. Um, it's pretty large. It's pretty large. So if you don't want all of this physical book, it's also as a PDF. This is also available as a PDF on our website. And 
there is also, if I can grab it, a level two workbook as well. So if this was too easy for you, if this is too easy, there is another level, a higher level available as well. But if you're new to Korean, if you're just starting out, um, this is a good place to start. I don't know how to read Hangul, but I don't know the words. I know vocabulary is one of the hardest things. And there is in this book a vocab list uh, at the start of the chapter to give you a head start with vocab. And we have flashcards. So if you do get this book, there's a little bit of help with vocabulary to get you started. Um, but yes, vocab is one of the hardest things. It's still something that I'm still learning new vocab all the time. So, does the PDF look identical to the books? Um, yes, except there is color on the PDF. So, like, these pictures in the PDF are color. But when we're printed these books, we just did black and white because it's a lot cheaper to print these books in black and white. Um, so, I think that's the only difference, really, that the PDF has some color images in it. How do we get the book in PDF form? If you follow the link in our bio, there is a link to our website and you can buy the PDFs straight from our website. Just put in your email address and it'll be sent to your email after you make the purchase on the website. Yeah, so they're both available in PDF form. I know that's pretty popular nowadays. A lot of people are studying more with, you know, PDF versions. Um, I get it, like it's easier to take around, it's, it takes up less space, all of that sort of thing. So if you want a PDF that is available as well, or if you want the physical version, of course there's TikTok shop, there's Amazon, other places as well. And next time we are going to be doing the object particle. So follow uh, us if you want to learn more, practice, do some more practice. <laughs> My friend called me weird for learning Korean. Um, uh, yeah, there's always some people that don't quite get it, but I support you. I think you're amazing, just so you know. Learning a language is such a great hobby. It's great for your brain, great for your... Um, it's just, it's great. I support you. Thank you for the free Korean lesson. I can't wait to buy these books. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed. I'm glad you guys liked the lesson. Um, and follow along for more. Okay. So I will call it there for now. Thank you everyone for joining. I hope you have a wonderful evening, enjoy your weekend, have a great Friday, and I'll see you next time. Bye, thank you.